love I'm falling in love with you Give you the highest praise You deserve it all You deserve it all Give you the highest praise You deserve it all You deserve it all Give you the highest praise You deserve it all You deserve it all Give you the highest praise You deserve it all You deserve it all Hallelujah. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Hallelujah. We just prepare our hearts for the word. Amen. Make sure you're good ground. Oh, that might be a spoiler alert. Uh-oh. Hallelujah. He does deserve it all. And this might be a spoiler. I think that maybe there was just a couple of you that maybe didn't give quite all there. Just... But you may get another chance here in just a few minutes. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. You might, that song might just maybe come up again. I don't know. Give you another crack at it. That's what the gospel's all about, right? Give you another crack at it. Amen. Well, Happy New Year to everybody. It's good to see you all. I, I am blessed that you've made a, a quality choice to come to God's house and hear from God and worship God and hang out with God's people. Good choice, good choice, good choice. Well, you know, being that it's uh, New Year's Eve, it's that time of year, I'm sure I'm not alone, uh, kind of reviewing back the last year and, and looking forward to next year. We do it every single year, uh, and I'm sure I'm not alone in that. We've all done it a little bit. So I've just been kind of uh, looking back on our 2016 for my family and myself and for this church and evaluating uh, how it went and did we do this well? Did we do that poorly? Can we do better with that? You know, am I alone? I mean, we're all doing this, right? It's that time of year. It's just what we do. It's, it's the calendar. And so uh, I was reflecting back, and I don't want to bore you with my own personal stuff, um, but as far as this church goes, um, this past year, it, it's honestly, it's been... Um, it's been nothing short of, of miraculous, honestly. I mean, it's just been kind of crazy. For those of us that have been around for a while, it's been an insane year. Like, insane. And, and, and really, at the top of the list has to be the joint you're sitting in. Like, it's, who, who, like, okay, so a small group here tonight, right? I love you all. Small group, but, but this was a good group a little while ago. And, and, and so, what crazy group of freaks goes and takes 30 people with 4,500 bucks and rents 10,000 square feet next to Home Depot, right? It's crazy, right? It's insanity, right? It's still kind of insane, but it, but it, it, it worked out. This place, it's an incredible ministry space where God can meet people, you can meet people, uh, you know, people can meet God and, 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 and just have a place of hope, right? It's an, it's an awesome space and, and lots of visibility, you know, right there on the highway and, and now we've got our little sign up there. You guys see it up there on the Home Depot sign? Y'all have seen it, right? So that's cool. So that was a long time coming. That was, everything's been a project. Oh my goodness. Every little thing, every pick, every music stand, everyone has a story. If you weren't in on it, it's just a crazy thing. But, but uh, this place has been incredible. And the provision, right, that's the big thing. Like it's a neat place and it's comfortable. And we made it nice and all that stuff. But, but the provision for this place was insane. We had nothing, right? What's 4,500 bucks get you? Okay, we pay, let's just, just so you know, very open, we pay $2,500 a month to be here, right? So, so that's incredible, but, but, but think about it now. You guys are smart, right? If you have $4,500 in the bank and it's $2,500 a month, you ain't getting far, right? But, but, but his provision came in, the, in, 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 in this look, in, 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 in an architect walking through the door before all these walls were up, and I was like, well, how much would it cost for your services? Anyone ever work with an architect? Uh, any, thousands, right? Right. So, so, it, so God's provision comes in the look of, of this guy, Chris, who walks in, and I ask him how much it is, and he says, from the second I walked in the front door, I knew that God wanted you here. My services are free. 
But that, that's what happens, right? It's the, it's the bare paint representative who doesn't even go here, and he's buying 50 gallons of his competition's paint and bringing it here and delivering it, saying, my wife and I know that God wants you here. It's our donation to your church. That, that's what it looks like, right? <laughs> Don't tell on him, okay? <laughs> he, bought glit, he bought the glidden stuff. Right? It was awesome, right? It, it was free drywall. It was, it was free paint. It was free pews and chairs and everything free. Just churches in our area, right? This is unheard of. Churches in this area giving us thousands of dollars because they believe that God wants to do something awesome here and they want to sow, sow a seed into our church, right? Things are lean. When you get other churches giving you thousands of dollars locally, that's madness. Awesome, awesome stuff. You know, electricians and plumbers and, and drywall guys and painters and sprinkler systems getting paid, like framers and all this. It was just crazy. And here we are. It was nothing short of miraculous. You know, it's, it's, it's really, what, what you're sitting in is really a, <clears throat> I'll scare you. It's a, it's a scaled down version of what I believe is to be. Uh, but it's, it, 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 it is what it is supposed to be. It's supposed to be a church that's highly visible, centrally located, easily accessible. We are here for people, not down some side street hiding. Please come over here. No, no, no. God brought us where they are. And so, so this place is, is certainly incredible, and, and, and I've prayed for this, and many have prayed for this, and here it is. So you see the reality. It's awesome. Uh, another thing that I prayed for, and, and 216 has, um, has been kind. I don't, well, he, God's been kind in 216, I should say. I've got to careful, be careful with what I say. Uh, one of the things that I prayed for consistently here for, for a number of years is that God would send uh, godly men to this church to stand with me and fight the good fight of faith. Like, and I'm not ripping on the ladies. I love my wife, and I love, I love you, Katie, and I love you. I, I love you, I, and, and I really do, but, but, but uh, there, it's, it, there's a Bible, and the Bible, it, it's, it says that the, that the leader of the family and the leader of the church is the man, and, and we need godly men in this church. And this year, for the first time in almost seven, he just started pouring in some godly men to come and fight with me and fight with us to fight the good fight of faith, Right? And, and it's been an abundance of awesome men in this, and, and I'm so encouraged by that, okay? And so uh, that kind of came to a, a bit of a head recently, and I want to tell you a little bit about something that's happened uh, as of very lately, like today, okay? As of today, um, before the sun came up, there were two elders in your church. It was myself and Dan Johnson, as of this afternoon, we've added a man to that list. And, and that's an awesome thing. Like, we've been waiting for this, okay? So I'm excited about that. A godly, an incredible godly man who, and, and he doesn't want me to do this. And, and that's another reason why I think that we made a really good choice is because he, he humbly serves and he's excited about serving you as an elder. He's here to receive your, your phone calls. He's here to receive your, 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 your prayer requests. He's here to pray for you. He's not starting to pray for you now. He's been praying for you. He's a tenacious studier of God's word. He loves to read books that enhance his understanding of God's word. He's here to help you, okay, when you're hurting. He's here to celebrate when you're celebrating. He He's here to help us make big decisions, like the, the, the little decisions, like the flavor of the air fresheners. I still have that privilege. <laughs> and you're not taking that from me, right? <clears throat> but, but big things, like if I have some, some doctrinal issue that I'm struggling with as I study, I'm going to defer to eldership before I ask somebody else outside. I want to talk to these guys. And, and if, I, if, if things uh, progress and the Lord decides to, to grant us favor and this church explodes and someday we need to get a different place, elders will be involved in that dialogue and decision. If we need to purchase property, if we need to do anything over $200, just so you know. 
Anything over $200 in this church, it's an elder issue. We talk about it. Anyone needs help in this church financially, that's what elders will do. He's here to help you. He's here to serve. And so just, and there's a lot more. But just that's basically what he said he will do. And so I introduce you, Robert Bidding. And, 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 I, and I just want to tell you that I believe that he's the first of several in this room that are sitting here right now. Awesome men of God. And I'm excited about you very, very much. Uh, I'm excited about um, our revolution band. We have, we have been praying. And, and I'm just going to let you in a little secret. For those of you who have been here for a while, you're going to know that there, was, there were weeks that uh, Jessica was up here going, uh, what video should I sing with? <clears throat> Right? There were weeks that Dan Johnson was our band. <laughs> awesome. If you weren't here, he played the chain one day. No, seriously, he played the chain. We still have it out back. He played the chain, dude. He's a hillbilly. He played the chain. That's what he did in a bucket. It was awesome. Right? It was awesome. Right? Did you ever go to the Country Bear Jamber? Never mind. Okay, so... But, but you know what? Like, we struggle. It's been, it's, been, it's been lean, man. It's been lean. And, and she's been like, she's a trooper, man. She's a trooper. But, but it's, been a long, it's been a long time and a long time come. But we prayed and prayed and prayed. Man, alive, right? Did you notice that Jessica's not even on the stage tonight? <laughs> that was a great place for an amen. Not because we don't want you up there. But because she got the night off, right? She's supposed to be off tonight. She's sitting there doing the computer. <laughs> she does love you. She does. But, you know, Brian and Toy, Nick and Lori, Tom and Danielle, Mike. Awesome. Awesome. Am I forgetting anybody? No, no, no. Band. Although Joey has, met, he's threatened to play the guitar, but it, we're still waiting. But it's only been seven years, so we don't want to rush you. <laughs> I love you. I love you. I love you. Andy. How could anyone forget Andy? Oh, my goodness gracious. Yeah, the memory of him will come back to me soon. <clears throat> It'll come late. <laughs> I love Andy. Andy's on a cruise. I'm surprised he made it before the, t the boat took off. <clears throat> now, how about 216? How about Jilda being baptized by Jessica? How awesome was that? 20, was it 20 years or something praying for this lady, right? And she gives herself to Christ in that cry room and comes up here and Jessica gets to baptize her. Awesome, 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 awesome. Um, a greater unity in the body of Christ, a diversity in the body of Christ. And I believe that this church right here will be the spearhead of that. Our community is, is in need of that. We're a, we're a racially divided community. We're an ethnically divided community. And all these different walls that society wants to put up to divide us, they break down in here. They break down in here, and, and so we're, I'm, I'm excited about that. I, I, I don't say this with any fear of offending anybody or, or whatever. The church that's with us on Wednesday night, that's a black church, man, and I'm excited about that. I love the fact that we just hang out in here together, and you know it's really cool? I only say that they're a black church because I need you to, to understand what's going on, but when we're in this room, <laughs> no one's even thinking, hey, there's the black guys. There's the white guy. No, we just, we just hang out. We're doing this study. We, we talk with one another. We pray with one another. Different churches, I guarantee you, they have some differences in theology. Don't even care. They believe in Jesus. It's all good. They have the same Bible. And, and so the color of their skin doesn't matter. So unity being formed in our church and diversity within the congregation, I love that. Uh, Christmas Eve last week was just an absolute joy. Awesome, awesome experience for everybody. Uh, yeah, like if you're going to clap, you might as well just clap right <clears throat> don't hold back or anything like that. I love that stuff, right? I've told you that before. I like a little, you know, give me a little something. Give me, give me a little meat on the bone. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. So, so, so it was an awesome night. And, and uh, did you guys, did, if you were here, did, did, you, did you notice like at, the, at that crescendo of the night when they were singing, here in your presence, the lights all went off? We didn't do that, you know? 
That was awesome. This, they were, you guys don't know this, but there was a truck out there this, that, that day, and they were up there putting new bulbs in these lights. We never had light there before. And he put the light up. I'm like, dang, man, that's going to ruin everything. And it went off in his presence. It was just awesome, right? It was awesome. It was awesome. It was awesome. It was so cool. It was an incredible year for sure, but I, I believe that 2017, I honestly believe with all my heart that 2017 is going to be such an awesome year that 2016, you look back at it, it'll seem like nothing. I honestly believe that in 2017 that more people are going to hear the gospel through this church than any year prior. Not only do I believe that that will happen, that more people will hear the gospel through this church, but I believe that 2017 will be a year that not only they hear it, but more people will receive the gospel, they will believe the gospel, they'll be saved by the gospel, and by God's grace, they'll go in that tank because of the gospel. I do believe that that is the case. You guys believe with me? See, we got to believe it. we got to believe it. But before we talk about this corporate thing called Revolution Church, we need to kind of back it up a little bit, just rein it in just a little bit, and we need to talk about uh, the parts that make up the whole Okay, that means you, Felicia. That means you, Nick. Let me just kind of go around the room and just start naming Debbie and Mike and Robert and Eileen and Holly and everyone, right? It's, it's, it's you, it's you. So your 2016 is coming to an end too. And your 2017 is right on the horizon, it's just a few hours away. So I gotta ask you guys a question. How was your 216? <clears throat> I was mentioning to the band earlier when I was in there praying with them that every year prior to this, it was kind of like this mixed bag of feelings about the previous year that was just ending, right? Some liked it and some didn't. But it just seems like this year, like on Facebook, you just look like nobody's enthusiastic about 16. Everyone was dying. We had the presidential thing. Everything was just a... It's a terrible, terrible, terrible year. Uh, my buddy, uh, Tripp, who he'll be here tomorrow. He comes on Sundays, which, by the way, we're open on Sunday at 10 o'clock if you want to come. <laughs> Here's a sad state of affairs. What are the two biggest days on the Christian calendar? Christmas. Guess how many people came to church on Christmas this year? One. No, not me. No, I mean, I did come, but somebody else. That's a sad state of affairs, isn't it? <clears throat> but Tripp said, let's hope that 2016 is the year that's remembered as the year we forgot. <clears throat> he has a radio show. He's good at that kind of stuff. You know, those words. But how was your New Year's? I mean, how was your, how was your 216? Was it good? Was it bad? I don't know. You just need to kind of evaluate it. Is your New Year's resolution that you want to have the same year as 216? Like, not exactly an exact replica, but in likeness. Like, was it an awesome year? And like, Lord, I just want to have a year just like I just had just now. That was so good. If you could just do that for me again, I'd be so happy. That could be you. Nobody? Or is the sum total of your New Year's resolutions for 217 to, to like earnestly pursue a way better 217 than 216? Because 216 was a nightmare. Yeah. I guess I don't need to ask the next thing is where are you personally? The clap should tell us where you are. <clears throat> but here's the thing, the 2017... The, the, the Revolution 217 can't be separated from your 217. They go hand in hand. They cannot be separated. Revolution Church is not the guy with the microphone. It's, it's not a me thing. It's a us. It's all of you thing. That's, that's the truth. You're the components that make up the church. And so if I could, could I direct your attention to where the Holy Spirit directed me this week? in preparation for this message. And it's right there in Luke chapter 8. 
Now, while you're turning there, and please do turn in, in God's Word. Don't just take my word for anything, ever. You have a, co- you have a, you have a copy of God's Word right there in front of you. Um, I'm happy to be able to announce Luke chapter 8, and I'll tell you why. We've been spending uh, five months now studying the gospel of Luke so we could worship Jesus well. He wants to build his church. He wants us to be part of it. We're supposed to lift up Jesus. And when we do, he draws people to himself. He'll fill the room. That's just what he does, right? So what do you do? You just preach Jesus for a year. Awesome. And I've loved doing it. But, but I, and I wanted to do it because here's the end of a year and the beginning of a year. And it's like, here's the bookends. And I want to just make a statement to God that, that you're what we're all about. We want to end the year preaching Jesus. We want to begin the year preaching Jesus. I want to make a statement to God from this church that he is the life of this church. He is the power in this church. He is the, he is, he's the pastor of this church. His mission is the mission of this church. I want him to know that, and I want everyone who would walk in and hear it to know that's what we're all about. But it's New Year's. And so I don't know about you, but, 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 but I felt the pressure of the calendar. It's New Year's. You've got to preach a, a new beginning, a clean slate, a fresh start. It's the new beginning of a new year. You've got to preach this. <clears throat> and then I opened up the Bible, and I realized just yet again how faithful God is and how his, his word is, 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 is placed just perfectly for us. The message of the new year is right where we left off. It's amazing. It's perfect. So if you want God's message, you just look right there, this perfectly ordered text. And if you look in Luke chapter 8, verse 15, the very last four words, this will help us jump off our message here tonight. I just said a moment ago that that I believe that this church is going to have an awesome year and impact the world, right? Right? And look at the last four words that are right there in this, this parable of the, of the scattered seed and the, the sower. And, and we're going to read that in a minute, but look what it says. Patiently produce a huge harvest. Produce a huge harvest. Isn't that what we were just talking about? It's, it's what we all want. Right? No matter, like if this is your church... Or if it's not your church, no matter what church you go to. So if it's this church right here in Leesburg or some little, you know, little Baptist church with a steeple out in the middle of a cornfield in Indiana, if you're part of that church, if God placed you in that church and it's not by accident, say amen, Amen. right? Then then you, if you're part of any church of Jesus Christ, you want your church to to do well. You want it to reach people. You want it to be successful. You want to you want it to have an impact in your community and abroad. You want to see people come to know the Lord and serve the Lord and love the Lord. It doesn't matter what church you're part of. You want to see a huge harvest, right? Amen. And I think that you guys do right here. There's a lot of churches you could go to, but you believe in something. You feel it, you sense it, you want it to happen here. And I do too, and I know I'm not alone. There it is, right there. The, the hope for Revolution Church is 217, right there, four words. Produce a huge harvest. But as the text will reveal to us as we begin to read it, Revolution thing is an all of you thing. For this to happen, it's going to take all of you. Let's read that verse. And I I preach out of the New Living Translation, but it's weak right here. I I, want to say it's weak because they say some words that just really don't even need to be in there. And and, and, in other texts, in other versions, it's not there. And this whole thing about honest, good-hearted people, yeah, there's none of those. Okay, so just let's get that straight. Uh, The seeds that fell on on the good soil represent, let's just say, people. There's some theology behind them. I'm not insulting you. Read your Bible. You'll know what I'm talking about. The seed that fell on good soil represents people who hear God's word, cling to it, and patiently produce a huge harvest. The point that's being made here is this for us that if 2017 is going to be a year where God produces a huge harvest here at this church, if it's a year that He's going to come in here and do something crazy up in here, then he's got to first do something crazy in 217 in you. 
He has to shake you up and stir you to do something different than you've been doing. 216 was an, I'm just going to say that, that, that 216 was an incredible year in spite of us, me included. I'm called to greater things, man. I'm called to greater levels of obedience. I'm called to greater levels of love. I'm called to greater levels of generosity. I'm called to greater levels of service. If you read the scriptures for an hour a day, don't raise your hand. But if you read the scriptures for an hour a day, you know there's this little thing inside of you that's saying, more. Read a little bit more. If you're here serving, there's this thing inside of you. His name's the Holy Spirit. He keeps telling you, serve more. Give more. Help more. Forgive greater. Love better. Like it's never, you never ever get there. And so 2.16 was an amazing year in spite of our lethargy. This huge harvest comes through people who hear his word. It says it right there. Hear his word, cling to it. We'll talk about what that means. And patiently produce a huge harvest. These are the people that God produces a huge harvest through. No one else. You see? No one. You might not like what I tell you tonight, but you will walk out of here with understanding of what God's word is telling you. And then you're going to have to make a choice. Three things in this one verse. First, they hear God's word. They hear God's word. Right? I'm not talking about here, oh, I heard it once. I went to church when I was seven and some guy said something. I heard it. I heard it. My grandma said that Jesus went to the cross to pay for my sin. And if I don't accept him, I'm going to burn in hell. That's not what it's talking about here. Hearing God's word means that you read God's word. That, 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 you, that you personally study God's word. That you're, that you're reading God's word personally. And, and, and you're reading God's word in small groups of accountability and fellowship. Learning from one another. That means you're placing yourself into the church services on the weekend so that the word of God can be proclaimed to you. That means you're listening to pastors and teachers on the radio, on the websites, listening to God's word. Faith comes from hearing the word of God. Faith doesn't come from hearing the word of God once. Faith comes from here. Here's two words for you. You should write these down. Consistent and committed. See, those are the people that he's talking about here. The, the people that, that w- the huge harvest will come to, they're hearing God's word. They're hearing God's word. Glory to glory, a little bit at a time. We were talking about it in our prayer time. That, that, that so they do something that they just, it's, it, they have God's word playing on the radio and stuff. So they just hear it over and over and over again, over again, right? And it just starts burying in. Right? You don't just hear it once and go, I got it. I've got to figure it out. I practiced golf one day. I'm ready. <laughs> right? It doesn't happen that way. You will never circumvent the system. If, you're, if you want to be all that God would want for you, you've got to be hearing God's word. And then it says, cling to God's word. What does that mean? I don't have an illustration to show you, but remember those Velcro suits? And the people would run up and they'd cling to the wall. <laughs> right? So, so just imagine if for a moment I had like a, a Velcro ball, you could throw it to me and it would cling to me. It, be, it becomes part of me, right? It's attached to me. So the people that, that hear God's word, they don't just walk away. They, they hear it and it clings to them. What does that mean? It doesn't take a brain surgeon to figure out. You need to be memorizing God's word. Make it part of who you are. I'll, memor- I'll write your word on my heart so I won't sin against you. It's the words of life. This is what I should be doing. 
committing it to your memory. If Jesus Christ stares into the face of the devil himself, if he uses the word of God to get out of that problem, what makes you think you don't need to? So you, 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 you memorize God's word. You're obedient to God. You cling to it. It's not like you heard it and then you ignore it. You do what it says. There's obedience to God's word. Those are the people that bring a harvest. And this whole idea of patiently producing a huge harvest, well, that just sums up one and two. That means I'm patiently. That means time. That means lasting consistency and commitment to reading and hearing God's word. I'm not going to stop reading. I'm not going to stop studying. I'm patiently means I will keep memorizing and I will keep obeying. This is not a fad. It's not a season of life. It's patiently. I'm going to keep doing this thing. I'm not going to read through the Bible. I did it. I'm going to keep doing it. I'm going to keep doing it. And the more it goes in, the more you're changing. The Bible says to let God transform you by changing the way you think. you got to keep putting this stuff in all the time. I met with someone this week, and I won't tell you the person's name, but he came into my office, and we were talking. Here's a guy who's always enthusiastic. This is going good. Look at this new Bible I bought. This is what I learned, and he's got still highlighted. But this time he came in, and his continence was totally changed. And he started re- listing off to me the things that were going on in his life that were bringing him down. And I just sat... And I just listened, and I sat in my chair like this, and after about 10 minutes of him telling me about all these problems, I looked at him and I said, you quit reading your Bible, didn't you? And he just did what all of us would do. (laughs) Yeah, I did. The nervous smile. The stuff that was going on in his life, is it going on all the time? Who's ever had a season of total peace? (laughs) Never. But when you're reading God's Word consistently, and you're memorizing it consistently, you're meditating on it consistently, and you're listening to the pastors, and you're listening to the preachers, and you're listening to your voice as you're reading the Word, and it's building you up. You're able to to fend that stuff off, man, right? So you you need to just patiently, that means keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. I have a question for you. Is this you? Is that you? Are you doing this? If it isn't you, then we, us, we can't expect a huge harvest. But if it is you, then then we should we should expect a bumper crop. We should we should expect that our nets will be bursting. We should expect that God's Spirit will pour out onto this place. He says his eyes are going back and forth across the earth looking to strengthen those whose hearts are completely his. He will fill the seats. He will fill the tank if you're those people who are consistently committed, patiently enduring through all the stuff and clinging to God's word. The impact of Revolution Church out there will never, ever, ever, say ever, ever. exceed The impact that God's word has on you here. Never. It'll always be a dream of what could be until you allow God to do crazy stuff in you through his word. That's that's the system, man. You can't circumvent that system. No one's ever done it. You can try if you want. Just don't come boohooing to me when it doesn't work because it's not going to. So as you consider New Year's resolutions, as we look back and evaluate 216 and make plans for 217, I think it's wise that we would do what Paul said to do in the book of 2 Corinthians. Chapter 13, 5, it says, examine yourself to see if your faith is genuine. We've got to examine ourselves. We've got to figure out, you know, I asked you a question. Is this you? Are you... Are you Hearing God's word consistently. Are you clinging to it? Are you memorizing it? Are you obeying it? Are you, are you sticking with this thing? Are you persevering and constantly pursuing the Lord? Daily, hourly, minute by minute. Are you doing this? We've got to test ourselves to see if our faith is real. And this text right here in Luke chapter 8, that's going to be our exam. And I believe God will use his word to determine Revolution Church's effectiveness in 2017. Listen, this is it. We could talk about a hundred different things. This is the sweet spot for your church. 
Listen, if you, if you, if, listen, if you will all get your heart and mind around this that I'm about to share with you, it's going to make it an awesome year. No advertising campaigns, no funny catchphrases, all the things that we do in here, making it nice, making it comfortable, good coffee, all that stuff is good, but that's supplemental to this right here, this one single thing. This is what needs to be shared and embraced by you if you want your church to have an awesome impact in this community and beyond. It's all right here. And I'm going to read this story to you, Luke chapter 8 starting in verse 4, and I'm going to read through verse 15, okay? Do you have a copy of God's Word in front of you? Okay. He has your attention. Is your phone away? Unless you're on a, on a Bible app. One day, Jesus told a story in the form of a parable to a large crowd that had gathered from many towns to hear him. Sounds like you guys, doesn't it? Hmm. A farmer went out to plant his seed. As he scattered it across his field, some seed fell on a footpath where it was stepped on and the birds ate it. Other seed fell among rocks. It began to grow, but the plant soon wilted and died for lack of no moisture. Other seed fell among thorns that grew up with it and choked out the tender plants. Still other seed fell on the fertile soil. This seed grew and produced a crop that was a hundred times as much as had been planted. When he said this, he called out, anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. His disciples asked him what this parable meant. And he replied, you are permitted to understand the secrets or the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But I use parables to teach the others so that the scriptures might be fulfilled. When they look, they won't really see. When they hear, they won't understand. Seems strange that Jesus would say that, doesn't it? That he's saying something in a way purposely so people won't understand it. That it's not clear. I'll tell you a little bit about that in a minute. This is the meaning of the parable he said to those that asked. The seed is God's word. The seeds that fell on the footpath represent those who hear the message only to have the devil come and take it away from their hearts and prevent them from believing and being saved. The seed in the rocky soil represent those who hear the message and receive it with joy. But since they don't have deep roots, they believe for a while, then they fall away when they face temptation. The seeds that fell among the thorns represent those who hear the message, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the cares and riches and pleasures of this life, and so they never grow into maturity. And the seeds that fell on the good soil represent, we've heard this already, honest, good-hearted, well, noble heart, who hear God's word, cling to it, and patiently produce a huge harvest. So Jesus says anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. So if you've never really read this, this section of scripture before, you might be going, like, I came to church tonight finally, and that's what you're reading. Like, what in the world does that even mean? Tell me how to balance my checkbook. Tell, my, tell me how my marriage can work out better because we're fighting all the time. Give me something to go on. And he, so he tells this story that just kind of doesn't make any sense really. And he says, anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. In other words, there's going to be people that do understand and there's going to be people that don't. And I prayed earlier that you would all understand. And this is the difference between one group and the other. There's only two groups right there. The people that understand and the people that don't. And the people that understand are the ones who want to. That's it. Nothing super spiritual about this. Do you want to understand? You see the difference is he spoke to a crowd and his disciples came and said, please clarify for me. They leaned in. They want to know. That's all. There was only that, that's the only thing there that we can go on is that these people leaned forward, leaned in. Jesus, I want to know truth. Teach me. Let me know. They didn't just hear it and walk away. Go, oh, great story. That was awesome. Where are we going to dinner? Jesus, explain to me. I want to know. He said in his word that if you'll seek him with your whole heart, you'll find him. That those who earn, he'll re, he's a reward of those who earnestly seek him. That's the only difference. If you Listen, if you're leaning forward, if you will, tonight, if your pen's in your hand and your notebook's open, you're paying attention, your, yard, your heart is yearning to understand something from Jesus, you will. You will. It doesn't mean I'm a good orator either. It has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with you and him and the, your heart's posture. So if you're leaning forward, if you will, you will learn what he has to say to you tonight. Amen? Amen. 
I want to preface, before I break this section down, I just want to preface this as something you guys already know. But I want to remind you that we are free will beings. I can't make you understand this. I will not twist your arm and make you agree or understand what is being taught here. And Jesus won't either. He'll just say it. You choose. You choose, okay? You have a choice to make here. So let's talk about these things. There's just four situations. There's the, there's the footpath people. The footpath people, people, the ones who, yes, they hear the word. They hear the word, but it says that they never believed it. And they never got saved. These are the people that come to church. I don't want to say week after week because most of the time they won't give God that. But they come to church often. And week after week and month after month, sadly, year after year, they sit and they listen and they don't hear it and they make a choice not to believe it and they don't get saved. There's no harvest through that person. It's true. If you're going to make disciples of someone who's not saved, you're not making a disciple of Jesus Christ. You don't want to duplicate that. Please do not. Right? So those, per, those people, right? No harvest there, is there? Is that you? Okay, so maybe you're not the footpath person. Maybe you're the rocky soil guy. The rocky soil people, they hear the word too. As a matter of fact, it says here, if you look back, it says, they hear the message and receive it with joy. But since they don't have deep roots, they believe for a while and then they fall away when they face temptations. The Bible says we should, just as we accepted Christ, we have to continue to follow him. Let your roots grow down into him. Let your life be built on him. And then you'll be strong in the faith that you were taught. You gotta let the roots grow down or the tree dies, right? Th these people here are the ones who, who heard it. They, they've heard the gospel presented to them and they get all excited and Jesus will forgive me and I'll give my life to the Lord and they say the prayer and let me get baptized. Awesome! And then you're like, what happened to, what's, what, uh, what's his name again? What, what happened to that guy? He was, he was so excited for the Lord. And what happened to that girl? She was here all the time and serving. And, and, and what happened? They never let their, their roots grow down. There's no consistent pursuit in God's word. So there's no roots that grew. And so when their old life creeps back in and their things aren't going good and they don't have that foundation, the roots down, don't, aren't down deep, the, the temptation to fall back into your old patterns and your old thoughts and your old lords, the Bible says, whoever you choose to obey becomes your master. And when that old lord creeps in and says, this isn't working good for you, come back home, and you're like, I'm in. It says they believed it. But they fell away because they weren't pursuing. There was no consistency. There was no commitment to the word of God. They heard it one time and they got excited. And then where'd they go? I could tell you from a pastor's perspective, that is so stinking painful. And our church has been plagued with that since it started. All the time. And I'm begging you, from you over, all of you, don't let that be you. I'm just, I can't, I don't know what else to say. And I'm telling you right now, you might think you're stronger than that, but you are not. And if you don't pursue God's word earnestly, ingesting God's word daily, you are going to fall away. You're nothing different than anybody else. They disappear from here. If we had everyone who was this exact description, who heard the word, received it with joy, gave their life to Christ, jumped in that tank, we'd have to have two services and every seat in here would be packed. Probably more. Do you know how many people we baptize in this church? Close to 300 now. Where are they? What happened to those people? That's what happened. That's what happened. It's true. 
That's what happened. There's no harvest coming from those people, right? So the question is, is that you? Or is it, are you close? Is that where you're almost at? Because you got saved, you heard the word, you received it with joy, you believed, but then you never consistently, patiently committed to God's word and pursuing the Lord with your whole heart. Because if you're not, you're, we're going to be saying that about you. Where's that? Where's, where's Tom been? Where's he at? He was so excited about the Lord. He was so happy. What happened? Where, has anyone seen him? Is that you? Are you there? Because there's no harvest there. So, so maybe you're not the footpath guy or the, or the rocky soil gal, but maybe the, uh, you're the among the thorns person. Uh, also, it says here that they, they hear the word. Look at it says, the, uh, the seed that fell among the thorns represent those who hear the message. They hear it. They hear the word of God, but, but all too quickly, the message is crowded out by the cares and riches and pleasures of this life. And so they never grow into maturity. The cr Jesus gets crowded out. And the, the, the cares and the pleasures and the riches of the... The Bible says that you... What, what do you have that God has not given you? Right? And, and, and every good and perfect gift comes from above, from the, comes down from the Father, right? So if you're wealthy and you have got some pleasures, if you've got a wife, if you've got a husband, if you've got a car, if you've got a house, if you've got a good job, if you've got health or wealth or good looks, whatever it is that you have, it was a gift from God. So are pleasures and riches bad? No, no, not necessarily. They're not. But if they become the most important thing in your day planner, then they become sin. And so what happens is it says that these things crowd Jesus. So here's Jesus, and you get saved, and you're like, whoo, I heard the word, I, I'm forgiven. And the preacher told me last weekend that he would forgive my worst sin that I ever did. And so I said yes to that, and it sounds awesome, deal. So I signed up for it, woo -hoo! And, and I was in. And then all of a sudden, I started thinking about, you know, I got to take care of my, my you know, because my wife's family's coming in town, and I got to, I, you know, I... I know I should be reading it. I know I should go to church tomorrow, but, you know, I got to pick them up at the airport, and, and then there's a family reunion, and, and, and we got a, you know, football game, and, and, you know, Gators are my favorite team, and, you know, God would understand, right, Brian? And uh, so, so and, and what happens is, it's not that you don't love Jesus. It's not that you don't believe the word that's being preached to you. It's just that you, 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 you start paying attention to these other things more and all of a sudden, Jesus, who is right up here with you, and you're like, yeah, we're celebrating. All of a sudden, Jesus is all the way over here going, yay, remember me? And you're busy watching the Gator game. And Jesus is just going, please, I saved you. Please. And he just gets, the wording is perfect. He just gets crowded out to the edges. It's not the most important thing. And some would say, well, God is a part of my life for sure, but let's just be honest. He's a, he's a small part of your life. He's a, he's a before dinner part, you know, a little obligatory prayer. Maybe a, a, a before bed part. Maybe a Saturday night part. Not a blinders on I'm going to pursue you earnestly, Lord, kind of guy. Not that kind of part. It's not a, it's not a I'm going to tenaciously ingest God's word every day, Lord. Not that kind of part. It's a crowded out part. He's there, but he's just part of the mix. So if here's you and Jesus hanging out here, and all of a sudden he's just kind of out here. See, these things are not bad. But they become bad when they become priority over Jesus Christ. And I got to tell you that this is the most common disease in the pews, in the church. This is the most common thing in the church. We're just too busy for God. Is that you? 
So you're part of something now. You're not on your own anymore. If you're on your own, do what you want. You're part of this family. Is that you? Because if that's you, there's no harvest coming. There's no harvest coming through that. See, none of the aforementioned people can expect a harvest. And if you make up Revolution Church, then Revolution's vision will never, ever become Revolution's reality unless you make a change. And I am believing for great things from you and through you. I do believe it. I believe that's why you chose to be here on New Year's Eve. Not everybody made that choice, as you can see, but I believe that you people are choice makers. You make big moves. It's a big move. A lot of things you could have done. So I think that your New Year's resolution should be New Year's revolutions. Okay? I think it should be revolutions. Sudden and momentous shifts in the status quo. That's the name of our church. Different. Different than everybody else. I think it should be something like, today I was one of the, the footpath people. I was one of the rocky soil people. I was one of the thorn people. And no great harvest is going to come through me. But as of January 1st, as of tomorrow morning, I will use the choice that God has given me, my will, I will make a choice to be a verse 15 guy, to be a verse 15 girl. Now I'm going to be the person who, who's consistently committed to digging into God's word every day. And I'm going to let God use me so a great harvest can come through my life. That's what I believe your New Year's resolution should be. No more will I put uh, God on the back burner and beat around the bush. And, and, and no longer will I, will I make church on the weekend an, a negotiable item. When did that even happen? When, when are we going to stop setting an example for our children that amusement parks and baseball is more important than Jesus? It's a hard call. But it's true. It's true. When am I going to stop worshiping the blessings that the blesser gave me instead of worshiping the blesser? When am I going to stop paying more attention to the cares and riches and pleasures that God has been so good to give me and I choose to ignore the one who gave it as I idolize the stuff he gave me? When is it going to stop? And I believe that it can happen right here tonight. You're a group of people that made a choice, a big choice tonight to come to church on New Year's Eve. I, I sense that you want that. I sense that you want a greater level of commitment in your life to the Lord and his mission. I, that's why you're here, is it not? Come on. That's why you're here. So you have to make some choices here tonight. Make a choice to do something different. Can I get the worship team back up here, please? I just feel like singing. I feel like, I feel like celebrating. I feel like, I feel like, I feel like, like, like making a statement. I, I, I feel like you guys want to make a statement with me. Remember I said we might have another chance at that song? Jesus does deserve it all. Amen. He deserves it all, guys. Well, the, the, the world is filled with churches, with, with people that are sitting in church just, just, just there because they want something from God. They need something from God, right? And, and he was a giver of good gifts. That's awesome. But why not? Let, well, let's make a change right now. Instead of being a church filled with people that want something from God, why don't we be a church that's filled with people that want to do something for God? Well, let's just, do, let's just change our perspective right here, right now. You can choose to do something different. You can choose to, to make God's word a, a, daily, a, a, a part of your daily appetite, right? Who would go days and days without eating? So why? Why? Right? Why do we do this? Every single one of these things is based on God's Word. And that's why we're a, a Bible church. That's why I don't talk about anything else except God's Bible, His Word, His Scriptures. That's it. Every single word of it is breathed from God. And He uses it 
to equip his people to do every good work. So listen, if you want your church, when you want, if you want June, July to come along, remember this night. Look around you. Look around you. Look at how empty it is. Seriously, look at how empty it is. If you want June or July to come around, and you can look back on this night and then look at what's in front of you, and you see this harvest, and you go, wow. Right? Just tell, is that what you want? You're just, it's just, play, just, just filled up with people repenting of sin and worshiping God, hands raised to heaven, right? Tons of kids in here learning about Jesus. Wouldn't that be incredible? I want a huge harvest. There's a, story, there's a, there's a book, it's called The Circle Maker. And, 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 and this guy, I, I want to say, I want to say his name is Hani. It's an old Jewish tradition. I don't even know if it's true, but there's a man named Hani, and, and there was drought in the land of Israel. <clears throat> and he went outside, and he got on the sand, and he drew a circle in the sand, and he stood in it, and he prayed. And he asked God to bring rain on, the, on, the, on people, on, on this people, on Israel, because we're your people. If we all perish, what's that going to do to your name's sake, Lord? So he prayed. And it rained a little. And he had the courage to say, Lord, I did not pray for a rain such as this. I pray for a, a soaking rain to bring crop up, a harvest up. And he didn't leave the circle until God delivered. He had the guts and the spine to say, God, I didn't pray for a little drizzle. I prayed for an abundance. I prayed for pouring down, saturating rain. So what's wrong? And then God did it. So what's wrong if we, if we are those kind of people? That we pray for that. That we ask God to pour out like crazy, to go crazy up in this place. That this would be a place that it's a destination church where people would drive for miles to come and experience the living God that it would impact the world right here. Why not pray for that? And why not be active participants in that story? And that harvest only comes if you will be a people who are consistently, tenaciously tearing into God's word, committing it to your memory and obeying it and never stopping, never stopping. Do not relent. Do not stop ingesting God's word. It is the one thing that will make this church explode is if you will commit to God's word and let him work ma magnificent, insane, beyond what we could ask or think miracles here. You guys want that? I'm totally in on that program. That's why we started this church. If you're in on that program, you can lift your hand up. Let's, let's just make a statement right here. Lord, that's the kind of church we want. And Lord, by faith, we're just saying right now that we want to be those type of people who are part of that. We want to be those farmers who are out there receiving this huge harvest. We want to be part of the harvest, Lord. We want to see hundreds, if not thousands of people. The King's glory is a growing population, Lord. You want all saved and come to an understanding of the truth. And Lord, that's why we're here. And we want to be part of that harvest, Lord. So Lord, give us the, 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 the spine to say no to sin, to say no to complacency, to say no to lethargy, and say yes to you, and say yes to your word, and say yes to your promise on every single thing, Lord. Let us not let, let church be negotiable anymore. Let's not make the Bible negotiable, just one of the books we read. Let it be the book that we read. Let it be a daily ingestion of your word that brings life, Lord, and bring life to this community, Lord. Let 2017 be the greatest year in the history of this church. Let more people hear and receive and believe and be saved through the gospel of Christ through this church than ever before, Lord. But those things only happen when we obey your word. Let us be a people who consistently hear your word, cling to it, and patiently produce a huge, someone say huge, huge harvest in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, Jesus deserves it all. So come on. Let's stand. Let's get. Some of you didn't left a little out there, right? You didn't leave it all on the field the first time. 
So let's let's worship Jesus the way he deserves to be worshipped. This will be a statement right here. Your first effort in 2017 to show God that you mean business. All right? Let's do this thing. Come on.